Okay, case number uh, three. This is a nice one. All right, so there is there's like a follicularly based invagination of the epidermis filled yeah. with all this keratin debris, and it looks like just a widened follicle um, associated with a little keratin cyst, and then these wide finger-like projections coming off of the epidermis. Um, so it looks either, even from low power, even like a big dilated pore of liner, but I'm sort of favoring a, a um, pilar sheath acanthoma just based on the those thickening projections. Excellent. That's a perfect description and exactly what the differential is, is that you've got the invagination that's dilated and so very similar to dilated pore of liner, which to me is basically the the punctum of a of a epidermoid cyst or a follicular infundibular cyst and a dilated pore of Weiner look essentially identical and I think they really probably represent just two ends of the same thing but when you get these enlarged kind of finger like processes like you said kind of the reedy that are are puffed up and expanded out from what looks like a dilated pore then you can use the name pilar sheath acanthoma if you want to get fancy. So I think this is actually a pretty nice example of what pilar sheath acanthoma is supposed to look like, but really it's kind of one of those lesions that's on a spectrum with dilated pore of Weiner. And then the, the cells, of course, are very bland keratinocytes um, and just the, the reedy are expanded. And uh, my Dermpath mentor and fellowship, Dr. Doug Parker at Emory, he always said it was like someone took like a bicycle pump and pumped up each of the reedy and they kind of inflated and bulged out from the dilated pore. And I thought that was kind of a fun way to uh, think of, of what a pilar sheath acanthoma can look like. Where do you think we are on the body anatomically? So I see some skeletal muscle bundles there. Yeah, so, um, so maybe like on the, on the face. Yeah, exactly. When you see skeletal muscle in the dermis, you're almost always going to be on the face or sometimes the neck because the platysma muscle can kind of come up into the dermis and subcutis. So yeah, you can even see there's muscle right up here, right? So yeah, the face would be a great place and these often do occur on the face.